Okay, here we are, here we are, Monday. And it is time for the 10X Business Owners Mastermind call that we do every single Monday. So if you're here live on the call, then what's going to end up happening is you're going to be, I have an opportunity to ask questions. My assistant Chrissy is monitoring the feed and she's going to be able to take those questions and then we will make time to get those questions answered. And for those of you that are just listening to the audio dialed into the conference line, if you have any questions at all, you'll want to press star six. So star six will bring you live on the call. All right, so in this episode, we're talking about the tools for establishing a schedule for success. We're going to talk about a couple of things. Number one, the myth about time management. Number two, how to create a schedule, success schedule to control your time. Number three, how to be consistent with your success schedule. And finally, how to operate at a 10x level in every area of your life. Because a lot of you are like me, like I was for many years. And occasionally still am today. I would really like to say I'm perfect at it, but I'd be lying. And that is the key to balance. The key to having complete balance in your life is not equal time here, equal time there, equal time there. No, no. It's being 100% when you're here, 100% when you're here, 100% when you're here. Okay? In every area of your life. So when I'm at work, when I'm on this podcast, the ringer is off on my phone. There's no distractions. I am 100% focused on what I'm doing. When I'm answering email, I'm 100% focused when I'm answering email. When I'm with a client, I'm 100% focused on that client. When I'm with my kid, I'm 100% focused when I'm with my kid. And by doing that, it allows me to be free mentally to actually do that, right? So how many of you have children or a significant other? How many times have you been with them all to not really, you're physically there, but you're really not mentally there. You're still thinking about what you could have, should have, would have did this afternoon at work or whatever you were doing, and it weighs on you. And it happens more often than not for a lot of us. And so we're going to talk about today on this call how to eliminate that from your life or at least minimize its effects because it's only when you can be a hundred percent present and focused that you are able to achieve bigger and bigger success. So one of the books I'm reading right now, I just cracked this open the other day. I want you to go out and buy it. Okay. It's called deep work. Okay. Let me make sure we bring it in here so you can see it. Boom. All right. It's called deep work. It's by a guy named Cal Newport. Okay. Unbelievable book. The very first opening line here is deep work is the ability to focus without distraction on a cognitively demanding task. First part of the book really details out why deep work is important. How do you get yourself to do deep work? And really what it comes down to is being able to really focus and operate to your full potential. Too many of us are distracted with social media, with this email, with this text message, with uh, this phone call, with, I mean, the distractions are endless. And it's in the ability to turn all that off and, and really just focus that's going to give you the ability to work. So one of the things that I just read this morning, okay, and we all have, a, hey, you know what, I'm just going to do it, right? I have the willpower, right? And one of the things it says there, you have a finite amount of willpower that becomes depleted as you use it. So how many of us tried to start a diet? Quit drinking, quit doing drugs, quit doing this, quit doing that. Maybe watch a little less TV and, and we don't really, we're just going to use our willpower to do it, right? And yet we fail. I know because it happens to me. And one of the things he talks about in there is, you know what? If you want to accomplish great things, you're going to do it with a schedule, with a definite program. I was reading it. I'm going, man, I'm getting ready to talk about that here in a few minutes. One of the things he's talking about, if you really want to achieve greatness in your life, it's going to happen because you made it happen, because you planned it. And one of the techniques I'm going to teach you is how to carve out your schedule. We all have 168 hours in a week. There's no difference between myself and Bill Gates, you and Michael Dell, Warren Buffett, any of these people, 
right? They, they all have to put their pant leg on one, one leg at a time. If I prick their arm, they bleed. The same red that I bleed, okay, that you bleed. So what's the difference between the people that dramatically succeed and where you're at? Now, you may be extremely successful, but let me ask you this. Have you reached your full potential? And the answer would be no. The only time you're ever able to really reach your full potential is when you're dead. Okay, when your life is over, guess what? That was, that was what you did. You either strived for it and went for it, or you didn't. Okay, and it's as simple as that. So let's talk about the problem. The problem is distractions. Okay, the problem with having a good solid schedule for success is there's so many distractions, right? Cat's got diarrhea. You know, the dog's fur is, is shedding. Uh, you know, the doorbell rang. The, this text message came in. You know, this happened, that happened. It's, it's all over, right? And if we allow our day to run our lives like that, we're not going to achieve the goals that we have. How many of you have come to the end of the day and you're kind of recapping the day and you're going, man, I didn't really achieve the stuff I really wanted to achieve. How many of you can relate to that besides me? Of course. So it happens all the time. And on the days that I am right on track with my schedule of success, man, I have an extremely productive day. And the days that I'm not, I don't. Now somebody asked me, it's like, okay, John, I can't really seem to be consistent. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. Stop trying to look at things in terms of a week or a month. See, I like to go in two and three day spurts. So for the next three days, I'm going to be consistent at this. At, for the next three days, I'm going to read X amount of pages in a book. For the next three days, I'm going to work out. And short spurts of success added up over time is how you achieve a big goal. It's like I was saying at the beginning of this call, announcing the coach's mentorship program. How was I able to go from 600 bucks a month on December 2nd, 2013 to a six-figure income by the end of April in 2014? And then quarter million dollars the next year and a half million dollars, well over half a million dollars this year. How was I able to do that? It's little spurts of time focused over time. Okay. Little spurts of time focused over time. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So the inability to achieve one's goals and objectives is the biggest disappointment you can ever have in life. How many of us know relatives that are in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and their biggest regret is they could have, should have, would have, if they only had more whatever, fill in the blank, if they were only able to whatever. Whatever the excuse is, it better be a good one because when you get to that age, you don't want to look back, right? Reminds me, I was in... Um, uh, where was that at? Uh, Kauai. So Princeville, Kauai, I stayed there two or three weeks ago and went there with no plans at all. And next thing you know, I'm going through a three day course to get scuba, scuba certified, which I did. And the last day going, you know what? A friend of mine wanted to go skydiving. I'm like, I've always wanted to go skydiving, but it was one of those things that I wrote down about 10, 15 years ago. And every year it's like, this is the year I'm going to go skydiving. And every year get, kept getting put off. I'm going, you know what? I'm going to do it, man. Got nothing else to lose. This is, this is my time to go do that. Here's the story. Went and did skydiving. Now, one of the things that they do when you do skydiving is there's a whole stack of paperwork that you fill out. Okay? It's about 10 pages. And on each page, there's about three or four areas where you have to initial. There are little paragraphs that you have to initial. And in almost every single paragraph, it talks about you acknowledge the fact that you can die from skydiving. Okay. And so you're having to initial this stuff. And then you get to the very last page and it says, stop, do not sign this page. You will be videotaped signing this page. Okay. So the guy comes to me and there's a paragraph there and you have to read the paragraph into the camera and sign it. And the paragraph basically says, I, John Pyron hereby acknowledge that I've read every single page prior to this page and I agree to every single thing. And I do acknowledge that by skydiving, I have the potential of causing seriously serious injury, uh, serious bodily harm 
or most likely fatal death. And I'm okay with that. And you have to sign the damn thing, right? <laughs> so you get up, you go out, and you got to jump tandem, right? So they put all the gear on. You walk out of the plane. Now, all this is going through your head as you're getting ready to get on a perfectly good airplane, okay? And you're going to be strapped to a guy that's probably jumped about 1,000 times. I think my instructor, the guy I dove with uh, has had over 1,200 dives under his belt. Right. So we get up there and uh, we get all strapped together and and, you know, the my friend goes out first and then it's my turn to go out. OK. And we're sitting there on the, on the ledge and, I, and I'm asking him, OK, how how long are we going to free fall? Because we're at twelve thousand seven hundred feet. How how long are we going to free fall? He goes, we're going to free fall for about thirty four seconds. And then we're going to open the chute and then we're going to parasail. We're going to parachute down for another four and a half minutes. And I'm thinking to myself, OK, what if the chute doesn't open? So 34 seconds at 120 miles an hour, I figured if the chute doesn't open, I probably got another 43 seconds and I'm dead, okay? So this could be the last 75, 80 seconds of my life. That's, that was the thought that was going through my mind. I still wasn't scared. The question was is, if I died right now, would I have any regrets? Well, first I said, okay, my life insurance is covered, so my family's going to be taken care of. I got my stuff in order there, got the wheel dial, all that stuff. And if you don't have that in place, I would recommend you get it in place. Second thing was, is if I died right now, would I have any regrets? Would I, would, would I do anything differently? And the one thing I said, no, I really wouldn't have any regrets. I've done a tremendous amount of stuff and I've made a lot of peace with my past. See, one of the biggest success principles you can do is forgiving your past. Okay. And that's not a part of today's deal, but I will tell you this, too many of us walk around with a big old backpack on our back full of our past. And it, it does not allow us to move into the future. And, and I was sitting there going, you know, I've got about 83 seconds left to live, maybe. Okay. Hopefully this guy's not suicidal today and does pull the ripcord. Okay. Because he's the only one that has access to it. Right. And, uh, and I'm putting my life in this guy's hands. Do I have any regrets? No. Okay. The, probably the biggest reason I don't have any regrets because I've done a lot of crazy crap in the past is I have forgiven myself about all that stuff. Right. The only regret I would have had. Okay. The only regret was not playing a bigger game. That's it. Not stretching myself further, not going more into it, going further into where I should be going and as far as my skill sets and that sort of thing. And you know what? I have a feeling a lot of you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know you have potential. You know that you can play a bigger, better game. But what holds you back? Well, what I found what holds me back is I don't spend enough time with myself. I, I discovered at one point in time I was putting on other people's oxygen masks before putting on my own. And what's funny is I took uh, Hawaiian Airlines to Hawaii, right? And the same damn thing happens every single time. The pre-flight check, you know, all the seat belts are strapped and tray tables put up and seat backs in their full upright locking position, right? That, that's all normal. And then they go through their pre-flight check. It's like, okay, in case, because we're going to be flying over an ocean, in case we, you know, uh, in case of cabin depressurization, What's going to happen is the oxygen masks are going to come out and we, you know, you're know, you going to want to put that on and then put the strap over your head. Okay. Now, for those of you that are traveling with a minor, a little child or a dependent that requires your help, it's very important that you put on your oxygen mask first before helping them. Now, why is that? Because if you don't, you both can die. Yet, how many of us, we get up in the morning, we make our coffee, we take care of the biological stuff, we, you know, if you're a woman, you get your makeup on, or you get dressed if you're a dude, and you get everything ready, and then you, you're you gone. You're, you're, you're out the door. And you go to work, and you show up, and boom, it starts hitting you. Boom, 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 one thing after another, distraction, distraction, distraction. John, can I have this? Can I have this? Can I have this? Boom, 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 boom. And we just go, Right? Our calendars, we show up, we get a lot of stuff done. You know, we may or may not get the stuff done that we want to get done. And then we 
get off work and we come home and then we got, you know, if we have kids, we got kids and, you know, family and wife or husband or whatever. And, and next thing you know, we're spent. It's nine o'clock at night and we're, you know, getting ready for bed. And we get up and we do it over and over and over and over and over and over again. And then one day you get to the point where I got too many years ago, which is who am I living this life for? I've done a great job of taking care of other people, making sure that there's no want or need in my family, making sure the finances are taken care of, all that stuff, all the stuff that I was taught to do, yet empty inside. And I'll never forget going down to Big Sur. This was in 2013. In May of 2013, going down to Big Sur, checking into uh, a place uh, off of Highway 1, and I got a cabin, and it was just me. I'm going to go away for three or four days, and my buddy uh, uh, Ray, Ray Harrison said, you need to get the book called Halftime. Halftime by a guy named Bob Buford. And so I got the book and brought it with me and, and uh, had no intention of reading it because I'm like, I got the cabinet, ca cabin and get up there, and I'm going to watch some movies, and guess what? No internet, cell phone doesn't work, TV, no TV. Okay. I'm like, Oh my God, what do I do? So I crack this book open and it talks about at some point in your life, you're going to hit a point where you're going to realize this is your life. And, and it ain't a dress rehearsal for when the real thing comes. It's now. And if you don't take care of yourself at the end of your days, you're going to have serious regrets. And one of the key things that Bob mentioned in there, he says, okay, if we, if we say, hey, our adult life starts at 20. And I'm thinking, okay, I, let's see, 2013, uh, I was uh, 43, okay? And so he says, imagine back, okay, so you went from tw age 20 to 43, and the amount of success and all the stuff you accomplished was as a result of the experience you had going into that 23-year stretch. Well, if you call right now halftime and you say, okay, what would life be like if I draw a line today? If you draw a line today and say, okay, whatever age you are, and you say, for me, it was 43. And I said, okay, if I draw a line today and I go into the next 23-year stretch, right? That means I'm going to be 66 at the end of that 23-year stretch. But now you're going in to that new 23 year stretch with 23 years of experience, what would life be like for you? What would you do differently? And that's what it's about. That's why it's important to have a schedule for success. Now I remember Clark Broom back in 1994 talked about you gotta have, if you want to build, I was building the Amway business at the time. So I mean, I was an employee, and I was building a network marketing business on the side. He said, what's very important is that you create a schedule that you can be consistent with. And it's in the consistency over time that will produce the results. And this guy was making well into a seven-figure income. And so I, I was young. I didn't know any different. I just took him at his word. Okay? And basically what it meant is like out of 168 hours a week, how much time am I going to dedicate to sleep? And I put that in my schedule. Okay, what's next? I need to put God first in my life. So how much time am I going to spend with God? Well, I'm going to go to church on Sunday, and I'm going to carve out some time each morning to spend time in God's Word. Okay, and I put that as an appointment in my schedule. Okay. Now, I got so analytical, I put this in an Excel spreadsheet. And Chrissy, if you remind me, I will share my Excel spreadsheet, and you can use it as a template, and you'll see what I'm talking about, okay? But I call it, here's sleep. Here's the time I'm going to spend with God. Next priority was myself. I have to put myself as a priority. If I don't, I will never make myself a priority. If you don't put yourself as a priority, no one else is going to make you a priority, okay? So people will start valuing your time when you value your time. 
And so for me, I wake up at 5 a.m., ask Chrissy. She looks at my calendar and says, wake up, <laughs> routine, right? And it's a little half hour routine that I have. I get up, I go and I make my bulletproof coffee, which by the way, bulletproof coffee and the, add the cocoa butter and, and the, the, uh, the, the protein powder and, and then the, um, the brain oil, right? Perfect coffee mix, unbelievable mix. Go to bulletproof.com. I need to get an affiliate link for that, by the way, Chrissy, because that is unbelievable, okay? I go and I make my bulletproof coffee, go hop in the shower, do my shower thing, okay? Make my bed. Usually takes about a half hour at the tops, okay? Now I'm ready, okay? I have a very specific space set aside for my morning routine, okay? It's literally a room in my house, and in that room, there's a couch, and there is a chair, and a light, and, and a couple of books that I'm reading in my journal. And so I go in there. I use Kelly Howell's um, uh, Attract Wealth CD, okay? It's 31 minutes and 29 seconds long. I go in there, and uh, the first thing I do is I whip out my journal, and I write out my top five goals. I basically ask myself, what do I do? want okay so you're gonna ask yourself what do you want and whatever comes to your mind first is what you're gonna write down and you're gonna write it in a present positive statement as if it's already happened okay it can be a sentence long it could be a paragraph long whatever whatever you're feeling like at that moment but you're gonna ask yourself I've got the rest of my life what do I want what do I want to be, do, have, whatever? Whatever comes to your mind, you're going to write that down. And then you're going to say, okay, what else do I want? And the goal is five. I want five things that I can write down. And what's amazing, when you ask your brain any question, it's going to give you an answer. So you're going to ask yourself, okay, what do I want? And you're going to write it down. Okay. And then I set that journal aside. And I whip out my book. Okay, right now I'm reading this book, Deep Work, okay, and because I found I could read multiple books at one time, but the average CEO reads 50 books a year. Now, does that mean they read 50 separate books a year? No, it's like my buddy, my mentor Darren Hardy said, he, I would, he, he's like, I would rather you read the same five books 10 times versus 50 books and not get anything out of it. So my thing now is I've, I've discovered the magic is seven. Okay, so I will read this book seven times, literally seven times, and I'll mark it up, and I'll pull out ideas out of here, and that's how I'll spend my time. So I set my timer, okay, uh, on my iPhone, and I, I start the music with Kelly Howell, and I read. I don't, I don't do anything else, I'm not thinking about anything else, okay, and I'm highlighting, right, highlighting. Timer's set to go off in 30 minutes. How music will last for 31 minutes and 29 seconds. So in that minute and 29 seconds, I'm just going to go back through and skim through the highlighted things. I'm going to put a star next to one thing. Just one thing. I just want to pull out one thing that I can take action on today or make it a part of a habit or a routine. I went and bought a stack of three by five cards, which I keep in that room as well. And I write down what that one thing is that I'm going to focus on that day. And that gets folded up and put in my pocket. Okay. And that's how I start, okay? Then what I do is I whip back out my journal. I review those five goals again, okay? Restart some of the meditation music, and I meditate on those goals. Sometimes five minutes, sometimes 10 minutes, sometimes 15 minutes. And what I'm doing is I'm imagining those goals coming to reality. What would it be like to achieve that goal? What would it be like to have that? What would it be like to stand in, like in, for my case, what would it be like to stand in, on a stage in front of 15,000 people and give a keynote address? What would that be like? Now, the largest audience I've ever spoken for is 6,500 people, but I'm thinking 15,000 people. First of all, do I know somebody who's done it? Yep, my, my mentor and best friend, Dave Vanny's done it. Uh, I've spoken on stage with Les Brown. He's done it. A lot of people have done it. So can it be accomplished? Sure. But what's going to stand in the way of me accomplishing it? The only thing that's going to stand in the way of me accomplishing it is me, of me not making an effort and energy to do that. So, so I meditate on that happening, and when I feel like I'm done and I'm centered, right, I whip out that journal. I go, okay, 
what is one thing I can take, one action I can take on each one of these goals today to just move, move myself one step closer, just one step. And I write that down. Next, I go and I whip out my laptop. I look at my calendar. And my calendar has already got appointments on that day. And I ask myself, okay, where am I going to put these five things? Where am I going to put these five things in here that I'm going to do? I set them as appointments. I don't put them on a task list. Why? Because they don't ever get done if I put it on a task list. I got all these other tasks competing for my time. But if it's in my calendar and I'm committed to showing up, I'll get it done. Now, if my calendar is so packed that day that I can't make time for those things, then I go, who's getting eliminated? Who is going to get rescheduled today to make time for the stuff that's important to me? Now, this is a very important success principle. Who on my schedule is going to get rescheduled because I don't have time to focus on the things that are important to me? You see, if you don't put yourself first, how in the world can you take care of these other people? Okay? And fortunately, I have great great, great client relationships, and I have a very understanding client base. And, and if I didn't, then guess what? They don't need to be my client. I need to go out and find another client because if our relationship is that shallow that I can't reschedule an appointment, think about it. Is that the kind of business that you want? And so I put them in there in my schedule, okay? Then I look at all the other appointments on my schedule and I go, okay, are these appointments on this schedule today going to help me achieve the goals that I'm going after? Or has something creeped up in my calendar that's taking up time that makes no sense? You know, and I eliminate that. Okay, so that's taking care of me first. And then the next thing I do is I go, okay, my kid. Okay? I need to make sure I make time for my kid. Where am I on my calendar? Am I going to give my kid uninterrupted, focused time. And I block it off in my schedule. Okay. Then I look at friends, relatives, anything else. And my goal is no blank space on that calendar. If there's any other blank space, then I'll go to my task list and I'll fill the rest of the blank space in. I mean, I put lunch on there. I put a break on there. I put sleep on there. I kid you not. I put sleep in my calendar. <laughs> so, so I put it in there. Okay. And now the cool thing is, is all I got to do is focus on today. I don't have to focus on anything else. I just got to focus on today. And that's it. Like this morning is an example. I woke up and I'm like, you know what? I don't want to do any of this crap on my calendar. I really don't. And so I, I woke up early, like before even five. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sleep in today. I'm going to take my time to get going. And so I rescheduled everything with the exception of this live call because I'm committed to doing this live call. This call is just as important for me as it is for everyone else because I get more out of this call than anybody else. Think about that. There are skills that you're trying to teach others. If you're a coach, you're trying to share and get your name out. If you're a business owner and you got this widget or this project or this product and nobody knows who you are, are they ever going to find you? And this doesn't cost any money to do, you see? So you can talk about your product, your service, all that stuff. Get excited about it, okay? Make time. The more you educate and teach on the stuff that you're good at, the better and deeper you're going to take that knowledge, okay? So I come out of that schedule. I've got my schedule now, okay? And I go throughout the day. And I'm just hitting appointment after appointment after appointment after appointment after appointment. And then at the end of the day, I take time. I set, take about 15 minutes and I recap my day. Did I get done the stuff that I said I was going to do? Did I hit all the appointments? What, what happened in this appointment? What are the follow-up items in this appointment? What do I need to do? When I did, you know, this one thing that I needed to do to move that goal forward, did I get that accomplished, right? And I create a success list. Here's the wins. I do this in my journal. That way I can go back and look, right? Do this in the journal. And then right before bed every night, I'm going to rewrite my goals again, okay? 
and that's my schedule. Now, that's my schedule. We gotta talk about your schedule. So your schedule needs to have a situation where you got your priorities right. Like in my case, it's uh, God, okay? It's myself, it's my family, it's my business, and friends and relatives, okay? In that order. And I make time for that. And when I'm with my kid, I'm not checking my texts. I'm not checking my phone. I'm not doing any of that because I've been consistent all throughout the day, okay? So here's your homework. I'm gonna put as a follow-up to this call, I'm gonna put it in the show notes, okay? Um, a blank success schedule. It's gonna be an Excel spreadsheet, okay? And I want you to look at your life. I want you to go, okay, you've got 168 hours in a week. How are you gonna carve up your 168 hours? How are you gonna carve that up, okay? So that's where you start, and then you commit to it. And then here's the key. Visit it once per quarter. Is it working, yes or no? And if you need to add, modify, or change something, you wanna do that at that time. But always give a strategy an entire 90 days to either work or not work. And if you do that, and you do 90 days, after 90 days, after 90 days, after 90 days, after 90 days, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have years that add up. And you're gonna look back at all the stuff that you've accomplished, and you're gonna go, oh my God, that is so great. I know, man, because I started doing this in 94, and I look back at, God, man, I built three multi-million dollar businesses, uh, traveled, uh, made a ton of money, big houses, cars, all that stuff, all that fancy crap. But I tell you what, when I was getting ready to jump out that airplane, right, potentially 83, 85 seconds left of life, I didn't think about any of that shit. I didn't. I didn't think about any of it, okay? Thought about two things. Number one, do I have enough life insurance that my family is going to be taken care of? And is it paid up? <laughs> okay. Number two, do I have a will that's very well detailed out and, and the executor knows what to do? And then the only other thing I thought about was, do I have any regrets? Would I do anything different? You see, we all have a day coming where it's going to end. It is what it is. Whether you want to look at that as a bad thing or a good thing. I look at it as a good thing because as long as I'm still vertical, I can change, I can impact people, I can have a tremendous impact on people's lives. And so I want you to go out and uh, see here. So let me, before I go, let me ask this, is anybody have, because there's people on the live call, there's people on the um, uh, screen here, does anybody, so we got Chris, we got Tim, Jesus, does anybody have any questions or would like to add any content, if you're on the audio, just press star six. If you're on uh, Zoom, just um, unmute yourself and start talking, I guess. And um, anybody have any questions or anything that they would like to ask? Hey, John, this is Chris. Chris Martinez, what's up, buddy? I'm doing well, my friend. I'm a little uh, under the weather, so forgive my voice, but um, great content today. I think uh, you hit, you know, um, the number one thing is to have a schedule and have discipline. Um, the hardest thing for me is, you know, sticking to it. I'll be at it for a couple of weeks and then things get in the way and next thing you know, oh, I just put it off and the next thing you know, it's two weeks go by and then the month's over. Yeah. How do you overcome that? Dude, I, I, I struggle with that from time to time, you know, and it's like I said in the very beginning, if I was 100% consistent with this, I'd be lying, okay? I think if anybody were to say that they're 100% consistent with this, they'd be lying, okay? But one of the things I've learned from uh, Grant Cardone, actually, is you know what? It's a lot easier to focus on little two to three day sprints, okay, versus a month, two months, a year. Right. And so there's two things that you got to do. Number one, you got to forgive yourself. Okay. And, and not, 
there is nobody on this planet that can beat your ass better than you can. Okay. So the first thing you got to do is forgive yourself and say, you know what? Guess what? I guess I didn't do it. And you're going to give yourself a clean slate. So you're going to wake up the next day and you're going to say, Hey, you know what? Okay. I haven't been consistent, but today I'm going to be consistent today. I'm going to do it. Okay. Today I'm going to get up and I'm going to do it. And you focus on the one day. Okay. And I was a part of a 12 step program for years. And, um, the thing that they focused on that, that has been the foundation of all 12 step programs is one day at a time. And it's no different in business. It's no different in life is you can't go back and change yesterday and you can't go back and change the fact that you were inconsistent in the past or any of that stuff. The only thing that you can do is, is focus on today. Now here's the good news. It's 1:43 in the afternoon. Okay. You don't even have to wait till tomorrow. You could say, you know what? I'm going to take the next 15 minutes. I'm going to write out my top five goals. You just start there. And then I'm going to find maybe one or two things I can do with the remaining amount of time today to move myself one step closer to that goal. And if that's all you do for the rest of the day, you're going to feel a whole lot better, number one. And then tomorrow you just say, okay, for the next three days, I'm going to do this. See, it's a lot easier to commit to two or three days than it is for a week, two weeks, a month, right? Do you think, sense? yeah, it does. Do you think uh, having an accountability partner is uh, a good option? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So if, if that's something that it, it really depends on the personality, like for me, um, um, if I have an account, accountability partner, uh, and I'm not, and I'm not committed to doing it, I'm going to avoid my accountability partner. <laughs> so, 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 uh, uh, other people, they thrive with that, right? So uh, the key is, is is committing to yourself, okay? So that's why the most powerful thing, okay, aside from all the schedule of success and all this routine stuff, right, the thing that will keep you really, really on track is just committing to write out your top five goals in the morning. Just that one five, ten-minute commitment will start forcing your subconscious and your brain to achieve that. And you're going to want to do your routine. You're going to want to read that book. You're going to want to go and do this. It's when our goals are out of focus that it's hard to be on track. It's hard to be in, in, in inspired, right? So it's like um, uh, if I said to somebody, hey, you know what? Um, there is round trip airfare, hotel food, the whole package. I paid for it last year. It's to Hawaii. Um, it's for a week. Okay. Fortunately, I'm not going to be able to go and then, um, you know, I've known you for years and I know you need a break. How about this? <clears throat> How about you give me a hundred bucks and I'll just give it to you. Now, all of a sudden, what would you do? A hundred bucks. Find a hundred bucks. You get a hundred bucks, right? And, but what would you have to do in order to go? Clear my schedule. And it would become a priority, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we make, we make time and priority for the things that are a priority. Okay. And if we're not doing the things that we know we should be doing, there's nothing wrong with stepping back and going, maybe the goals that I've been going after aren't really my goals. Maybe I need to get myself a new set of goals. You see, because we do as human beings, we make time for what's important. It's like the, the most terrible excuse people give me is uh, I don't have time or I'm busy. And all it means is, is first of all, it's a lie because we all have time and we all are busy. It's just that they make time for the things that are important to them and they are busy because they're focused on the things that are important to them. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'd rather them tell me, you know what? I really like to get together, John, but quite frankly, you're not a priority in my life. <laughs> so, so you're saying that it's a matter of importance and how important it is to you in your life at the time. Yeah. Sit down, sit down, try it tomorrow. Sit down and write out your goals everything that I've talked about today and get centered on what you want. 
the more that you get resonated with what you want and where you want to go, the more these types of things will become a priority for you. And, and like, I just went over my, my routine, my schedule, you've got to take this and make it yours, right? Like it may not work for you getting up that early. It may not work doing it first thing in the morning. You may be one of those people that like I, I, I cleared my calendar today and I discovered that, you know what, when I read at about 10 in the morning, I don't fall asleep. <laughs> what I did discover is if I read first thing in the morning, I got to kind of have some coffee and that sort of thing. When I read at night, I fall asleep, but I'm thinking, I think I need to rearrange my schedule, man. I really enjoyed reading at like 10 in the morning. I was engaged, not distracted. I'm like, I just need to rearrange my schedule. So it really comes down to the routine that works for you and what's important to you. But where you start is write out your top five goals. Just continue to do that every day, twice a day. Okay. Whether you do anything else, if you write out your top five goals, the, you ask yourself, what do I want? And you write out those top five things and you do it twice a day in a matter of about two weeks, you're going to get very clear on what you really want. And now all of a sudden, all this other stuff that you know to go do will become a priority. So you don't need another book. You don't need another podcast. You don't need another one-on-one -on -one session with me or anybody else. Okay. You already know what to go do. Okay. We all, everybody on the live call, everybody listening to the recording, if you're over 25 years old, you know what to go do. Okay. It is, there's nothing making it a priority for you. Okay. And the challenge is most people only hit their, only look at their goals once a year. If that you're going to start looking at them twice a day. And over the next two and a half weeks, it took me about two and a half weeks to grant Perry a little over two weeks. Most of the people I've, I've given that exercise two to three weeks, you're going to get very, very clear on what you actually want in this life. And that's going to give you an energy, especially when you start backing it up with action, right? That's why you want to schedule the, 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 one, the, the five things that need to happen that day. And you want to celebrate those and keep an accounting of that because you're going to start making deposits in that confidence account of yours. And so you're going to be able to withdraw. You'll see it's in the consistency that gives you the results. It's in the consistency that gives you the confidence. But if you don't know where you want to go, it's going to be very difficult, right? Does that make sense? Absolutely. Thank you. You bet. Uh, anybody else? Tim Porter, how you been, man? Hey, Seuss, you there? Chrissy, you there? Yes, I am. Okay. How did it go? You got any questions? Um, I think the only question that I saw was the one that Chris asked himself. Okay. How about yourself? You're a business owner. No, I don't have any, at least off the top of my head. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Um, let's check one more time here on the, um, on here, star two. Okay. So if there's no more questions, then, uh, we're going to go ahead and in, in today's call, uh, Next week, we're going to, what I'd really appreciate it if people, if you guys can think of your number one business challenge. So your number one business challenge, if you can email that to me at jpyron at johnpyron.com. So jpyron at johnpyron.com. Okay. Email me your number one business challenge. And if you do that, I'm going to send you a very special gift. So uh, that's going to help us create valuable content going forward that's meaningful to you. So go out and make it happen, and we'll talk to you later. Have a great one.